In this section, we'll deal with creating a single user, looking at user attributes, deleting, suspending and restoring users, modifying users and creating multiple users with CSV files. Hello everybody and welcome to G Suite, formerly known as Google Apps. In this lesson, we're going to go through, as I mentioned previously, user management basic user management and for that we need to click on the user icon now the purpose of these videos we're going to be administering a company called c and d cakes a bakery and bespoke cake making outfit that has decided to use google apps as its business software solution it'll give people email it'll give people cloud file storage, the ability to collaborate with Google+, access to calendars, a group structure, and a security process behind it, securing that company's IP. We've got a few users already created. We'll take a look at this Alexander Jones. We can see the status is never logged in, whereas the status of my account here shows me being logged in quite recently. We have icons to quickly reset passwords and you can see you can type in the new password or select auto generate. Typing in a password of a weak strength, password for example, comes up as weak, not enough letters, too short, or a complex password will show it as strong. And you can also set the tag to require that user to change their password in the next sign-in, making that password and user account their own. You can also rename the user account. He might want to be known as Alex Jones, for example. And then you can also change the primary email address. It depends on the company and whether or not you want to take exactly what's on that company's um, tax information that uses tax information or their birth certificate or go with nicknames either way you can make an amendment here and with email addresses you could even add an alias and we'll cover that a little bit later on then finally on this line we have the menu button and clicking that we're given quick links to delete the user suspend a user or send that user an email On the left hand side, we can see we are, being, we are filtering by active users. We can also show suspended users, users with data transfer in progress, where they may have been deleted, then reinstated, and the information is then being restored from another user. Where there's been a problem with a data transfer, or users that have been recently deleted. And we'll cover that later on. First though, let's look at creating a user and just create a single user. You move your mouse down to the blue button and it immediately gives you a menu. We want to add a user. The user's first name is going to be Caitlin. Her last name is a family business, Jones. Her primary email address, and I'm not going to keep these email addresses the same as we'll go through changing email addresses in a future lesson. Caitlin Jones at CD Cakes. They'll be assigned a temporary password by the system. We can add additional info like a secondary address, a phone number. For home, we can add a phone number for work and select work. And then also a mobile number. The address 
we can add the bakery C and D cakes. Flag that as work. Then select next. The employee ID. Well, we'll make a number six. We'll make sure she's an employee. And her title can be pan washer. You can assign the manager's email, what department they're in, and we'll put her in the bakery and what cost center she's got. We'll assign her a cost center of one and then create that user account. Now, this screen here shows the information that you can send or print out and physically give to the user. Now you say, well, how can I send them an email? They haven't got a user account yet. Not to worry, because typically you would say to the user, and what email can we contact you on? Either in the HR process or have that on record. Or print it out, give them the piece of paper. You're also prompted if you want to create another user account in this way. This way is very good and quick for creating individual users. And later on in the lesson, we'll talk about creating bulk users using a CSV file. Now, as an administrator, you are typically going to be put into a position where people are going to be leaving the company, either of their own choice by natural attrition, or they'll be sacked due to some sort of dispute, or they may go on sabbatical or and not be involved with the company for a period of time, but still remain actively employed and remain on the company's books. G Suite can handle this effortlessly. So we've already mentioned the reset password, the rename, or the menu button, and we touched on this briefly, shows where we can delete a user. And if we say we're going to delete Caitlin Jones, selecting delete brings up this screen. Now, you can have the option to transfer data to another person who would be associated to that person's role, whether it be the manager, the person replacing Caitlin in job, or just another department head. That way then, the information is not lost. Caitlin, for example, comes to you and says, right, um, I have to hand in my notice. No worries, it comes to the end of a notice period, whether that be two weeks or 30 days. You say, right, fair enough, no problem. We're going to transfer all that information now to your manager. That way then the new person coming in can share the benefit of all the work that you've done during your time with the company. So you can transfer drive and docs, also data that's not shared with anyone. So all depending on the company policy for maintaining data and most companies stipulate in their terms and conditions that they own the data plus their Google Plus pages. You then click assign a new owner. For example, we'll type in my name and then select transfer data and then delete account. But we're not going to do that yet. Now, Caitlin, perhaps, may have gone on holiday or may be fortunate to have a baby and will have six months away from work. Well, she's still an active employee on maternity leave. Not a problem because we don't want to delete her account in order to lose all her work that she's gained over a working life. We can simply suspend her. Now, suspending means, as it states here, they will not be able to log in because they're going to be on maternity leave. They're not going to be able to access services like email, the drive, the calendar, and other company data, but the data is not going to be deleted. And they won't receive invites to calendars or other stuff that comes through email. They're still licensed users though, because they are suspended and 
G Suite is still maintaining their data. Then when they come back, they sim you simply re-invoke their user account and they go back to normal. All their data is there. They may have to change their password if your password policy has got to a point where their password have naturally expired. So a less severe way of getting people not to access your systems. For example, a user may be going through a dispute with HR or the company and may be dismissed or put on to leave. Suspending that account until that situation is resolved could be a prudent course of action. Let's take a look at deleting a user and we touched on this briefly. So we'll select delete. We'll select the data. We'll assign a new user for the data. And I'll be the recipient. We'll transfer the data and then delete the account. Now, this isn't as permanent as what you'd imagine it to be. Yes, the user will not be able to access the account as soon as you click that button. However, if there's a change of heart, if they decide they're not going to leave, or they're not going to be forced to leave, or there's a change of circumstance, you can still recover this data up to five days from pressing the button. After that five days, however, the account does get deleted. And you can see the account now has been suspended and the data transfer has been started. And you, as a super user or super admin, will be notified once that's done. Now you can see she's been removed from the active users list and will turn up either in the suspended users depending on where the process is, or recently deleted users. And there she is, Caitlin Jones. Now, Caitlin has decided she may be on a temporary contract and then be hired as a permanent employee. You select the user, you select the undelete user section, and the restore has therefore then be initiated. As it states, it may take two hours for a complete restore. Changing the filter back now to suspended users, we see Caitlin Jones and another user currently suspended because the system is now reapplying all the uh, attributes to the user account and re-invoking it. Then when ready, the user account will turn back up in the active users section. Now we've seen how we can create an individual user. Let's look at how we can create multiple users. You click on the plus at the bottom, select multiple users. Now you're given the option to pre-populate with existing users a CSV file or just download the blank template. We're going to download the blank template. And it's downloaded and we can open this CSV file in either Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel. So here we are, we're now given certain options we can use to input bulk data. Now you might get that data from another system, a HR system, which you can then put into a format such as CSV and manipulate within a program such as Excel or Google Sheets. So we're going to add somebody in. We're going to call them Dennis Jones. The email address is going to be Dennis Jones at CND. And a work phone of and a home phone of and a mobile phone of a work address the bakery 
Now you could cut and paste this if you would populate with other, other users, though I have found that if you do pull the information in populating that CSV file with other users, that with the password field, if you leave it as it is, it overwrites the password and prompts all users then to change their password. This could cause havoc. If you're initially setting up Google Suite, then not a problem because everyone would have the same password and no one would be using it. So we're going to employee ID of 11, employee type of employee title, and we'll call him a spoon washer. Department, he's in the bakery, and his cost center of one. So we'll save this. We'll keep the same format. Just tab it so we can see. We haven't listed the password. So by default, G Suite will give them an auto-generated password. So that's Dennis. Let's load that into the bulk user creation app. So we've loaded our CSV file and attached it to step two. It couldn't be easier. Upload. So we'll get sent a report when it's complete, but as it's one user, it won't take too long. In fact, there is Dennis, Dennis Jones, imported via CSV. So a CSV file, very quick way of entering data on bulk. If you have a large user community, or you just wanna set it up with some unified information straight off the bat. Let's select his user account. Now, we can see how much mail storage he's used how many docs he's owned, and that will be the initial email on getting started. And we can send him getting started information from this section. We can either print it out or send it to a predefined email that we've got him. Obviously he hasn't got access to this one. So this might be a personal account that he might have registered when he joined the company. Selecting on account, we're then given the option that we can edit any information that we've entered on an individual basis. We can add their Google Plus profile. We can require him to change his password at the next sign-in or view the password as a super admin. We can reset the password. We can reset the sign-in cookies. This will reset all active sessions and prompt the user to sign in again. So if, for example, there's a problem with that user, you can reset the password, reset the sign in cookies. As soon as that browser refreshes or anything happens with that browser, it'll prompt for a password before performing any option. You can add an email alias. Now an alias is another way of addressing the same person. Dennis may be preferred to be called Den Jones. So you add an alias. click save. That again gets added as an alias. That way, what will happen is all mail will be sent out via Dennis Jones, but he can receive mail as Dennis Jones or Den Jones. We can also see what storage this user is using as a newly created user, so he wouldn't have used any storage. We can also take a look at what suite services are enabled, and we'll cover this in a future lesson. But you can see whether you have calendars enabled, contacts, Drive, Gmail, Google+, Keep. What groups the user is assigned to, and we'll cover groups in the next section under Group Administration. We can show more indeed and see security, whether two-step verification is being used. Do they have any admin privileges to back up the single administrator that we currently have in this organization? Are any additional services enabled? And by clicking this, you can see, you can add a company store. 
the ability to blog, analytics. A lot of stuff here you may not want your people to use within your company. It may detract from them actually doing their work. For example, who in a bakery making bread or cakes is going to want to know all about Google, Ad Google AdSense or AdWords or analytics? You may not want them on YouTube, for example. So that concludes our first look at the G Suite console, in particular focused on the user section of G Suite. G Suite, as I mentioned before, is the rebranded version of Google Apps. Thank you very much for watching. Please look out for more videos in the series.